Hello once again Star Wars and Unboxing fans, welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host Darth Tuba and today we have a little hodgepodge of a few items. We have some items that were um, ordered on eBay and I've just received and we have an older item that I'd like to unbox, uh, something from a, a roughly, whew, probably around 15 years ago and um, a relatively new item that I found in a Hallmark store that I just can't wait to share. So why don't we start with the oldest item first okay so we're going to put this over here put this over here and we're going to start with this now what is this this is the star wars clone wars dirge with swoop fight swoop bike swoop bike yes all right dirge action figure now some of you might be wondering who the heck is dirge i never heard of dirge and if you look also and you see that it says clone wars that you might be thinking, oh, that really cool 3D animated cartoon that came out roughly around 10 years ago, right? Uh, 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 uh. No, because well before that several years, there was another Clone Wars, and it was actually the what they call the Jendi series, Jendi, Car Jendi Tartakovsky, who all, it was famous for Dexter's Laboratory, Samurai Jack, and uh, a couple of other ones on Cartoon Network, and there was a Star Wars cartoon on Cartoon Network, and it was called simply Clone Wars. It took place between when Episode 2 was released in 2002 and Episode 5 was released in 2005, and they ran two series. It's called a micro-series, where it actually would show a an episode that was only about three minutes long, and then it would connect to the next episode, which was also three minutes long, and it would go on. And then, But I think at the very end of it, it came out to like a 28-minute episode and it was 2d animation and it was the kind of a larger than life version of star wars um there was characters like anakin obi-wan mace yoda um and then villains like uh there was a villain there was general grievous there was um the uh count dooku but then there were other villains like Asajj Ventress, who later g gained more notoriety in the The Clone Wars um, episodes uh, that happened later with Lucasfilm. And um, another villain in it was this villain, Dirge. And so they did tie in um, licensing with, um, with Hasbro, and they released a couple of toys um, in, you know, with the, with, I can't even say the, with the Clone Wars uh, title that included some of the characters and the sculpts, you know, cartoon look likenesses of the characters. So it was really a, an awesome series. They did two seasons. One was like three minute episodes and one was I think a bunch of, I think in the three minute episodes, I can't remember if it was a half an hour or an hour, it was somewhere in that, somewhere between that. And then the other one was like 12 minute episodes and they did like Five of them, or something like that. So it was really cool. It only lasted. It was. It was completely, uh, you know, done by Jendi Tartakowski. It was not really. I mean, Lucasfilm, of course, okayed and everything, but it wasn't really done in house. So it was kind of an experiment. I don't think it's considered canon now. I think it's. It was still just a kind of an outside thing. But I think in some ways it was kind of a test. A lot of the voice actors that voiced the characters, like James Arnold Taylor, he returned to do. Obi-Wan Kenobi and um, Tom Kane, who voiced Yoda, returned to the uh, 3D Clone Wars. So that's the story of Clone Wars. And the Dirge character was pretty cool. Now, being that this was a cartoon, I can, oh, looks like this is actually starting to come, down, come undone in the bottom here. So I guess no guilt in opening this up. Um, seeing that uh, there was, it, this was a cartoon, um, you can imagine that there was a lot of like, bigger than life uh, stuff going on. So. It, you know, they, it, I remember there was an episode with Mace Windu taking out thousands of battle droids, just like flying over them and just get, getting them all. Um, clearly, a, a little less realistic, you know. And, and, and I remember watching it, thinking to myself, "Okay, you know, this uh, this is cool and all, but this guy can take out whole battle droid battalions of thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of droids in one swoop, but he couldn't." survive Palpatine's lightning so you know that's kind of weird so it's kind of you know you got to take it or leave it but um but you know at the end of the, at the end of the day it was it was Star Wars it was cool um, notice the yellowing on this it's uh this is the kind of thing that happens when you do keep things in the package um you know with fluorescent lighting or or um or even just direct sunlight 
uh, you can cause yellowing. It's a very common thing. Remember, these toys were never meant to. Uh, they were never meant to stay in the package. They were meant to be opened and played with, as I've said on many episodes. So, but Dirge um, was a pretty cool character. He did, you know, again, like like the heroes of this, he was kind of bigger than life as well, and and he, he kind of at times could grow to you can almost be like monsterish, you know. So it's neat. If you ever had a chance, I think you can find it on. Um, on uh, on DVD, I think they did release a DVD um, of both series, so you can find them. I think D okay. this is the old school. Yeah, look at the plastics all coming apart here. All right, there we go. All right, all right. Sorry for the crackling noise there. Um, Dirge, but it was cool, you know. And again, the nice thing about Dirge is that it was a, it was a unique sculpt. You know, it was something that you don't see every day. And that's something else, like as a collector of Star Wars figures, I always looking for. I'm always looking for something unique, something different. I recognize that as a toy company, they're they're appealing to kids and therefore and the kids want the heroes. So you're gonna see a lot of um, you know, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Darth Vader. You're gonna see a ton of those characters, and I get that. But I just feel like when you can get a different character like this, it's really cool. It's just an interesting sculpt. It looks really cool. Now it comes with the back of the package here includes a few other items. We've got his backpack. Okay. Oh my. He has a gun, which the tape is still stuck to. I think the gun attaches to the backpack. So let's see, let's put this thing together. I don't think it gives us instructions on how to do it, but it does kind of show. Now, he has guns uh, rubber banded to himself here, but I'm gonna take them off because I've found that the rubber bands pretty much break off anyway um, when you try to take these things out. But he's got, but again, this is the, this is the late, you know, Hasbro started uh, allowing, never see, let me get this right in here. He has holsters. So get to get him in there. Okay, and let's get this one off. Thank you. Because I want you don't want I want to have his hands free so that he can grab the handlebars of the swoop bike. And by the way, fun fact: swoop bike. All right, it's 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 essentially a speeder bike. Okay, it's just a little more tripped out speeder bike. And a fun fact that that is uh, that not, not everybody knows is the fact that swoop bikes were essentially a product of um, another expanded universe thing called Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Now, Shadows of the Empire, I'm gonna put this thing together, it needs to clip in there. Come on there, buddy, get him in there. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, Shadows of the Empire, was essentially a, and I think I might have mentioned this in previous episodes, so if I'm repeating myself, please forgive me, but it was a, oh, this, this is cool, it just hooks on right to the, right to the side of the gun. Nice, okay. And I'll get his backpack. Well, anyway, Shadows of the Empire was a um, kind of a book, comic book. It was basically a full-on release of every kind of product you can imagine other than the movie itself. It was if it took place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and it was a pretty cool kind of system, kind of setup here. So it was a neat uh, idea but it was a really good story and a lot of fun and um, they, you know, similarly to this, they created a lot of different characters. It was cool. I have, for the life of me, do not know how this gun fits on this so I think I'm just gonna put one of these guns in his hand I'll have to look if anybody has a comment want to leave a comment as to how do I get this other part in here they don't always give you the instruction they just expect you to figure it out and you know I feel like an idiot I should figure this out but I'm looking and it's not like it's an e there's an easy place for it to be attached it doesn't there's nothing there even the gun itself is kind of hard I don't know how he's gonna hold it you know it's kind of like I don't know maybe it's supposed to Make sure it's not supposed to fit on something else, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like the gun pretty much is supposed to be part of his thing. I don't know. Well, 
Oh, you sad, sad thing. Now, I also noticed that um, this is having a hard time staying locked in here because, and I think I know the reason, um, the plastic is starting to bend on this. So, we're kind of in a bind here because um, the plastic, you know, again, and I'll say it again, toys were not, dis oh, there we go. I think that's better. Okay, yeah. I just had to bend it in more. Okay. These stores are not designed to last forever, guys. So just be ready. Be ready. Some of these pieces of plastic are going to start breaking down. I mean, not like, you know, to nothing. They're just going to break down a little bit. All right. So let's get him seated on here. Let's get him holding that. Let's see if I can get him holding this gun at least. But it's hard. But, yeah. I'll have to take a look at it and try to figure it out. So, but there he is. On here, you know. At this point, I'll give you some close-ups. Okay, um, so that's locked in now. So that's cool. Anyway, Swoop Bike was a name of a bike that came out of Shadows of the Empire, the the, the novel, and um, they did release toys that included that, and it was cool. So, still not exactly sure where it's supposed to go, but oh well, it is what it is. So we'll figure it out. But anyway, all right. So there's your Swoop bike gun all right now next up let's talk let's talk about this one so what is this well maybe some of you have seen this might already know what it is this is an item that I saw while browsing through my local Hallmark store now for those who know that know Hallmark that Hallmark has two very popular Star Wars items actually three if you count they have some ancillary kind of you know tape dispensers and picture frames and banks and things of that nature that, that they've kind of partnered with Lucasfilm and licensing. But they've also done, of course, the ornaments, which, you know, we've done here on the show. And we've also done Itty Bitties, which are little, small, kind of plush characters that we've talked about on the show. Well, look at what they came up with. And I'm not even sure exactly when this came out. They said they, uh, the, the, the store owner said they had it for a little while. But look at it. This, it's, it's the... Cantina Band, or at least it's four members of the Cantina Band. It is officially Figrin Dan, Naylan Cheel, Ichabel Kant, and Doik Knotts. Okay? All right, so that's Ichabel Gaunt. Gaunt, I can't say it. Anyway, <laughs> Ichabel. All right, there are others, okay, but these are the four that they released, and they each have, they're, they're each, they look pretty much the same except for the instruments that they're holding. So cool, so awesome. Uh, I have a very strong affinity and love for the Cantina Band because those who, know, those who know me know that I'm a musician by trade, and that is something that I really love. Even that's hence the name Darth Tuba. Um, some have asked, you know, are we ever going to hear you play? I do plan on putting some music out there on this channel at some point. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so I'm just having so much fun doing unboxings. But this is neat. The the um, the the actual thing is it comes with a backdrop. So. Um, I, I hate to say this, okay? I know, oh, box becomes a backdrop scene. Oh, oh, okay. Well then, I'm gonna open it. I am gonna open it. But I have to do this carefully because I'm not getting rid of the box. I'm going to keep the box and use it as a, so I can use it as a backdrop. Hopefully this will, Oop, no rip, no rip seats, no ripping. It says box becomes a backdrop. Oh, it looks like, okay. I think I have to, there's a little dotted. I'm gonna actually cut this over like this, this way. Oop, dude. I might have actually just destroyed the box, the the box art, but oh, I see. Oh, okay. I think I'm just going to keep it like that. And the reason I say that is because I'm just going to clean it a little bit more. The reason I'm saying that is because um, these things are cool, and sometimes keeping them in the backdrop is kind of fun, you know. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. There you go. I don't think we have to do much more with it. There it is. See, I'll get some close-ups of it. Because they're just really cute, and you know, if you, they're not, uh, there's nothing really 
exciting about the backs of them. So I think I'm going to keep them in the box just like this. Now, we've been while we're on the subject of expanded universe like Shadows of the Empire, why do these guys have names? You never hear their names in the movie. Uh, Star they, they, they appeared in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, the very first released Star Wars movie back in 1977. These masks were actually off the shelf, I think, alien masks uh, Rick Baker provided for pickup shots when um, George Lucas wasn't happy with the original uh, cantina band that was filmed. I uh, didn't like the way some of the creatures looked, so they kind of, you know, spruced it up a little bit, if you, as it were. But um, what I love is there's an actual short story. There was a book called Tales from Jabba's Palace or Tales from, Tales from the Moss Eisley Cantina. If you can pick up these books, if you're, if you're into like short stories, these are great. There's like Tales of the Bounty Hunter, Tales of the Moss Eisley Cantina, Tales of Jabba's Palace. They're all short stories that kind of tell kind of the, you know, different stories happening to the different characters that you see, all the different people inside the, and aliens inside of the uh, cantina band, or, or uh, inside of the cantina, and inside of Jabba's Palace, and that kind of thing. It's really fascinating. It's now all legend, okay? It's expanded universe set prior to Disney's acquisition, so it's all legend now. But the cantina band one is still such a cute story, and they, it's called We Don't Do Weddings, The Band's Tale. And they actually made it into a, an audio drama with uh, different voices, voicing the characters, and they even wrote different music that they were playing, and they tell this really cute story. It's a great story, and this is where you really get to hear all the names. Like Figrin Dan, Naylan Shiel, Ichabel, Gaunt, Doik Nods, I think, um, I think Tetan was another one, and Barkwin Dan, I think, was another one, I forgot. But um, there was, so it's really a cool story. So if you ever get a chance, you know, try to find that one. I think you can get the audiobook like on, uh, you know, Audible and places like that. <coughs> All right, next up, we have some um, mail mailbag that we're going to open up. Now, nobody sent me this. I'm not at that level of uh, YouTubership yet. But um, what I did do was um, I went on to eBay, which I do sometimes, and I made some purchases of the some solo figures from Wave 4. Why did I do this? Because we are um, well past the expiration date of how long um, solo action figures will be out on the shelf and now they're starting to release new let new waves not only new waves of the uh the, the the vintage collection but new waves of that new resistance uh, line of action figures so so solo is old news okay uh so i i'm very concerned that i'm not going to find it in the stores i've been around this rodeo a few times yeah it's possible that i'll walk into a shop and see something hanging there but I'm going along with the assumption that I'm done. You know that 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 is over, and and to find that that last wave, which is always a problem with Star Wars, to find the last wave before they go on to the next wave of new things, is always a challenge. Doesn't matter which movie, doesn't matter. It's always been a problem. So I oftentimes will find them on on eBay and pay probably a little a little too much, but I did. Now one thing I didn't realize when I purchased from one seller, um, I mean, this is the moral of the story. Always really look at the description and the title okay and make sure but, but especially the description because i did not realize that one of the figures it was a two-pack and the figures came loose not a problem they're loose and they're complete uh it's just i'm not my unboxing is really just this what i just did here so it's okay i uh i don't i'm not really that concerned with it because eventually you know i was going to unbox them anyway so it's fine um but just to give you an idea that if you're looking to Spend money on eBay. Just make you know buyer beware. And I, and I can tell you, if something isn't good, if something isn't the way it should be, eBay is very good at getting you refunds and you know that kind of thing. If 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 you're not, unless it says no refunds, that kind of thing. But this was packed very nicely. So what do I got here? We have the two pack. Sorry, my my. my uh, Get myself a little more straight here. And again, I'll get all close up. We have the Chewbacca and the um, Han Solo in the Mud Pit two pack. They're both from Mimbam, Mimban, okay? And it includes a, uh, a gun, kind of like, a, like a laser gun, which of course never existed in the film, but hey, you know. I'm just making sure that I'm not missing something here. 
Oh, interesting. It came with two instruction cards. Oh, one is in English, one is in... Uh-huh. I see. All right. Um, oh, I get it. Okay. So we got our little boom here. I don't remember this, but okay. You know, they want to say that it was here. Okay. I, I trust you. Okay. And then you... All right. There we go. So there's a little laser gun there. Okay. And but they both include their little chains that was late, and then somehow, now although not in the movie, uh, Han got a hold of a. Oh my goodness, his hand just fell off. Oh boy, got a hold of a blaster, but we'll just keep it in there. Really, really fun, really cool stuff, and they're all kind of caked with that mud, that that gray mud that they were in. And this is Force Link. So let's let's get this done. Schedule. Come on, let's get out of here. I could use some backup. Come on, let's get out of here. I've got to find a way out of here. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I've got to find a way out of here. Pretty sure that again, I've said it before. I'm pretty sure it's been it was David W. Collins voicing that Han Solo. Let's hear Chewy. What does he do with you? He just growls a lot. <laughs> it's interesting. In previous episodes, you might have noticed there was a there was a figure that wouldn't work on this. It said I had to do an upload. I did the upload, and it still didn't work. So I never got it to work. But this one works fine. So. There we go. I love the Chewy. Oh my God, it's so good. The look on his face is like, I'm in mud. This stinks. <laughs> I thought that was funny. All right, so there we go. Chewy and Han, when they when they first meet, it's like history right there. So cool. All right, and what do we have left? We have I don't know if it's one or two. I did manage to find the whole wave. I don't have it all here today. Um, so there will be another episode where we will unbox the rest of it once they come in the mail. Okay, um, this one, oh, there is two, okay. This is Beckett and Rio Durant. Now I'm curious about what, if they got them to do voices because, but let's get them opened up. So we got, and again, I'll be putting in the close-ups there it is. Here's Beckett. Here's Rio Durant. Loving my Rio Durant. I can't wait to find the Black Series Rio because he's my favorite character from that movie. Sorry that he bit the dust so early in it. Spoiler alert. But if you haven't seen the movie, shame on you. Go see the movie. It's silly. I really enjoyed um, Woody Carrollson's portrayal of this character. I really felt that he did an amazing job of, of just making it feel very, I don't know, Star Wars-y. I don't even know what what else to call it you know just so neat in fact i'm hoping that sideshow will do a beckett um large scale figure you know because i really feel like that's um it's so awesome you know so all right hold on hold on i know you're gotta get your i noticed something about these figures that's different this year this you know this is one of the later ones the hands and they they easily come out of the sockets of the arms which is kind of weird but improvise. You gotta learn to think five moves ahead. Assume everyone will betray you. You'll never be disappointed. There's a lesson to be learned here. Sounds like it could you be him. Learn to think five moves ahead. This, I gotta say the force link stuff's getting much better. It's more accurate. Alright troops. Prepare to engage. There's a lesson to be learned here. Stick to the plan. <laughs> Assume everyone will betray you. You'll never be disappointed. Great shot. So pretty cool stuff there. All right, loving the uh, loving the Woody Harrelson. Uh, if it's not Woody Harrelson's voice, it is somebody who's a dead ringer. So that's good. He's got very small feet, so having him stand up can be a little bit of a challenge. Come on there, buddy. All right, and then we got Rio. Forget what his um, alien is. What 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 alien race he is? In our in our Jillian or something of that nature. And 
course he's got his eh, his gun. All right, which hand do I put him in? I think I'm actually going to put this one in the holster just because he's got a lot going on here. Oh my goodness. Oh, Rio. Rio. Uh, maybe not. Okay, I'll put him in. I'll put this. There he goes. A little smaller. Okay, but you know, four hands. So let's see what we got. Are we sure about this? Yeah, they come. You can count on me. Remember, it could always be worse. And it usually is. I'm not backing down. Remember, it could always be worse. I don't think that is a. Uh... Usually is. <laughs> you can count on me. Remember, it could always be worse. And usually is. I have to say, I'm not backing down. Here they come. I'm a little disappointed, but only for a little. T the figure itself is beautiful. The figure is gorgeous. I'm just a little disappointed in one little, one little tiny itsy bitsy reason. Okay, I really, really wanted to have a figure that would say, "Trust me, you you never had a better night's sleep than curled up in a Wookiee's lap." <laughs> I always thought that was the best line, but um, Rio, really cool stuff. So that's where we are right now we got some we got some cantina band figures we got uh, an older an older figure dirge with the swoop bike and we've got a two-pack of han and han and chewy and Mimban and beckett and rio durant really really cool and that'll do it for this week's episode of darth superstars unboxing show be sure to like subscribe hit the notification button hit the little bell let, so you know when new videos are coming i drop them usually on sundays and wednesdays and uh, i've been kind of falling into a pattern where i drop a uh, an unboxing on Sundays, and on Wednesdays I usually do a shelf talk, okay, just to kind of spread things out a little bit. Um, check me out on Instagram and Twitter, at, at Darth Tuba, on Facebook, uh, Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page, and leave me an email, DarthTuba77 at gmail.com if you have any suggestions or suggestions for unboxings, thoughts, comments, or leave a comment in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, may the force be with you.